Hey guys, Steeble here. Today we got a look at a new campaign reward ship. It's a tier 7 Japanese cruiser this time. Suzuya. Sister to the Megami. Cousin of the Otago. And stepdaughter of the Azuma, apparently. There's the Suzuya there. Got a map, shards, domination mode game here. What's the difference between this and the Megami? We got 15 guns as opposed to 10. But they're 155 caliber as opposed to 203. So light cruiser version of the Megami, essentially. Uh, here we're spawned north, or we're on the north side of the A spawn over here. I've been playing this map more with the uh, philosophy of getting crossfires early in the match. Now, if you're spawned in the middle, depends on which side you are, north or south side. But you can shoot into one flank or the other. Uh, they're usually not expecting it. Or if we're on the flanks here, you have the option to shoot in the middle. And again, they're not usually expecting it. Other problems we have over here, we have no destroyer. They have two destroyers. We have two destroyers. So I'm guessing they probably, you know, it's a 66% chance they have a destroyer over here. And he's going to move into the cap. He's going to spot me. I got one battleship backing up around the island to the west of me. The other one's going to go kind of to the southwest and divide himself from the rest of the map by putting those three large islands between him. Uh, that, at least that's what it's looking like based on the deployment. So we're going to zone torp there just a moment ago into the cap, hoping to kill that destroyer that we expect to be there. And then we're just going to move to the east about one grid and start supporting the middle here. And this, if you can change the balance of power here and create these overloads where initially it begins as a 3v3 in the middle, now we're creating a 4v3. And again, they're not going to expect it right off the bat. So... Moving in, we're just going to start peppering this Vlad here once the situation dictates. We're going to go ahead and take a couple shots of this Nagato while he's spotted. We don't get spotted there uh, due to the island cover. But, you know, again, we're kind of primarily responsible for A, but it's just based on the deployments, based on the ship compositions over here. It's not the best situation for us to do. So we can either get behind some of these islands and kind of play really passively, uh, and this flank is going to be played extremely passively by these teams. Or we can just kind of move over here, support the middle, and uh, start burning this Vlad down. Now the Vlad, Russian battleships, usually not the best candidates to try and burn down to HE. But he's basically got everyone that spawned on B shooting him, or at least a couple of their ships are. Uh, and then he's got us chiming in. Now he goes at damage cons there, or you know he'll be using the damage con. But even though he's got the quick cycling... Russian damage con. We got the shells that reload every eight seconds or so. Good fire starting chance to begin with. If you're using your Makawa build, you'll get plenty of fires. Enhanced fire starting chance on this Azura lane. Otago. If I, if I haven't explained, or if you don't know what this commander is, basically you get more raw HE damage, higher fire chance, but much more damage coming towards you. And you can, we're going to see the kind of the dodge ability the dodging play style here. Now, the Vlad shot where we were, didn't notice that we were about to back up, so we dodged that shot. We're going to be trying to kick it forward here as the Iowa shoots. He gets me there pretty well. And uh, him and the Surrey, I believe, are kind of teaming up. And we've lost about a third of the health, so we popped the damage con there. But look at the Vlad. Now, he keeps putting out these fires here. But again, we're getting plenty of raw HE damage. And we got a double fire there. He just used the damage con, so he's going to get stuck with those for a little while. And this is plenty of damage piling up on him. And we're going to go ahead and whittle him down. He's going to drop spot because of the smoke, but he'll burn out here. Go ahead and switch over to the Surrey because we got that target. He's trying to capture the base. Want to get some resets. Want to get some damage on him. Iowa continues to shoot. And note when we're seeing these shots come in here, basically we're zooming out usually pretty much every time we shoot. We want to be keeping an eye on the horizon, seeing these shots coming. And then when they are coming, we want to turn away from them. And that'll uh, keep us alive a lot longer. If we're getting shot in the Citadel with the Megami, the Suzuya, the Otago, ships of that nature, the games won't last very long. So the ships aren't meant for that type of behavior. But if we can keep dodging these shots for the majority of them and be angled enough to protect the Citadel uh, like we were there, uh, we stay alive long enough. So in my opinion, I haven't done a side-by-side -side, uh, armor view analysis. This one doesn't seem quite as sturdy as the Megami when you tightly angle it. But um, overall, it plays pretty similarly. And maybe the differences in armor are all 
all in my head. I know there's slightly less HP on this one. Check this play out here. We got a splash there. The guy's in the smoke, so we don't see him, but we aim at the splash. And because he's uh, basically, we're alerted to his position, we get another hit and a reset. Not catastrophic or anything, but that is a trick I wanted to show you guys. You can, anytime you're torping those, uh, the smoke covered positions and you see a splash like that, you see the torp hit, you can kind of deduce the position. Again, shots come in, we turn out. Now, good players that are able to adjust their aim. It's kind of a fool me once, shame on you. Fool me, we can't get fooled again type of a situation. If you keep dodging these shots, you keep pulling out time and time again, well, they're just going to aim up a little bit more. They're going to aim in a little bit more. They can adjust their aim, potentially just switch over to the HE. There are ways to deal with this. So it's always, you know... It's not a situation you want to only have. You get, it's one of the tools in the toolbox, in other words, to do deal with ships. And we almost took a lot of damage there a moment ago because we figured he was going to be dead, kind of started turning to the right as we're doing now because I want to get into B as quickly as possible. But we were more or less broadside for his final salvo. Just got lucky. I was taking some hits here. We're going to be piling in here. Just keep gunning him until he's dead. Again, eight-second reload. Good raw damage output and good fire starting chances i was going to be in a lot of trouble here his best bet maybe get one more shot off at us or someone else but he's not long for this world so we got c the red team started off with c we flipped that uh we're winning that side over there but we're about to kill a destroyer i believe but you know up until that side gets resolved this is still a pretty open game so we definitely want to get on b as quickly as possible would have been nice if these battleships would have just moved in there as we were kind of attacking the middle with them. Really press that advantage. But nonetheless, we'll get on B, we'll get that cap, and then as long as we can hold a two cap advantage, the game should be looking pretty good. Raw zoning torps here. I'm looking on the map saying, okay, we got a destroyer on the loose. That's the final piece of this puzzle. Once we take him out, there should be real, really no reason that we would ever lose this game. So we'll just throw him out there. No harm, no fall. If they don't hit, um, but then we're going to move into B here and uh, try and lock up the wind. So, Suzuya, what do I think about the ship? I got to tell you guys, if you're not that familiar with my channel, I really like the Megami. I really like the Otago. Those are some of my favorite cruisers in the game. So, if you hate those ships, you're probably not going to like this. Because I like those ships quite a bit, and I, I'm digging this. You know, we've played 10 games or so. Early impressions, early impressions are strong. Tried to zoom some shots over there in the Nagato. As we fired, we got spotted, and those torps kind of simultaneously came on. So we could deduce there that the destroyer is basically more or less where we're pointing at uh, on the game screen there, outside of that blue firing ring, you know, that the actual detection range of the ship. So we got some clues there. Just going to go ahead and try and pile on this Nagato as he's low. Uh, and then we got to be aware that the destroyer is over there. Kind of a misplay by this destroyer. He had time to get on B and capture this base. He was just kind of sailing. You can see where he's grayed out on the map. He went all the way around the island in front of us, and then he just parked on the forest. You can see on the map where he is now. So he had plenty of time to get on this base, sail through it, and then if he wanted to go towards C, he could have done that. Uh, but we are trying to dodge the torps here. Don't have enough steam, though, and we get knocked down to 865. And he's going to take one more shot here. We're going to be down to 350, or no, 538. Holy smokes, there's not a lot of health left to deal with. So we're expecting to die here. Uh, we're just trying to get as many shots off blind into the smoke as possible. And if we can get some torps off, that would be a bonus prize because we got a pretty decent chance to hit this guy uh, from that range we're looking at where those shots are emanating getting clues as to where we should be torping and then once this nagato burns down we drop spot and that actually is uh gonna keep it well we took some shots there but luckily the armor on the side holds up and that's gonna keep us alive so we're not gonna quite get those torps here he's gonna be on the run but as this is happening i want to point out i got some giveaways going on this channel here wargaming gave all the cc's some ships to give away for the two-year anniversary mine one of them will be for the channel members the youtube members those are the green names and the streams so members stay tuned i'll give you a community post uh for the instructions on that giveaway one giveaway here we got a tier four ship on this video now you got to pick between krasny krim gulio chasare and 
uh, Octoknik. So two of three, of, two of the three of those are really solid ships, and some people even like the third one. How you enter? Go to the comments section, write down, you know, PlayStation or Xbox, whatever you're on. Gamer tag must be spelled properly. If it's spelled improperly, I guarantee you, you're not going to get the prize. And let me know out of those three ships what you want. So that should be all in the comments below. If you want to enter for this giveaway, I'll let the video be up for a few days, then I'll tally them up and choose a winner there. And then we'll do one more uh, ship, probably maybe on Sunday's stream is kind of what I'm thinking here. But stay tuned. The giveaways, you know, one of them's for the members. The other two are for channel subscribers. So if you want to be involved with the giveaways, make sure you're slapping that uh, subscribe button around. But here we're still continuing trying to get this crack in here. Now, this is kind of a low percentage play we'll see but basically what i'm doing is lining up the guns with the edge of the island and as soon as we're spotted now we'll have a line directly projecting out between me from the ship through that aim point basically once we're spotted we know he's roughly where i'm aiming at now we don't know the depth we know he's outside of my uh well we know he was inside the blue detection ring so he couldn't be too far away but uh, we roughly had a straight line of where that ship could have been and even if you're not trying to blind fire the shot there, like we were kind of taking a low percentage shot, just trying to get this cracking, it's useful trying to spot those destroyers, figure out what they are. Just keep in mind, as you're coming around islands, once you get spotted, okay, draw the line straight out between you right along the edge of that island, project it outwards. That's where the destroyer is, usually. I mean, sometimes it'll be way off, uh, and he might be behind a different island or something like that, but... There he is, pops up. He's got about half health left. I'm thinking, all right, we got a crack in here with the Suzuya. This is going well. Uh, we're going to pile on him there, get him down to just a little bit more health than we got, but not a lot. Follow-up shots away. Uh, we land. Oh, we only land one or two shells. We got the high caliber, and then, oh, boy, we get some help from our team, and crack and averted. Anyway, that's a look at the Suzuya for you. If you did like that one, Please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. We've got lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you guys. And see you all later. Peace.